Hello and welcome to Random Things. This is Ty. And for this video, I'm going to kind of document my attempts to descale my Norit tankless water heater. So what's happening is the way the house is plumbed is hot water goes in the house. It hits the front bathroom and then the master bedroom bathroom. And so when I'm in the master bedroom bathroom taking a shower, it's nice and hot. But if the kids go into the front bathroom and takes a shower, all of a sudden, I don't have enough hot water. It gets really cold. It wasn't always like this. When I first bought the house 10 years ago, it came with a tankless water heater. And the whole concept of a tankless water heater is kind of like an unlimited supply of hot water. So long as it's sized correctly. And at the time when I first bought the house, it seemed fine. But over time, I'm noticing that whenever the washing machine comes on, whenever the kids uses the bathroom, I start feeling it's not sufficient. So I think what's happening is the heating element is scaled up. And so I'm not producing as much hot water as um, what it used to. So what I need to do is run and circulate and descale the heating element. Now I haven't quite done this before. Actually, I've never done this before. But we're going to go ahead and try to figure this out. So it can't be that hard. Let's take a closer look on how the tankless water heater is plumbed. So you have the gas supply line, right? And there's an isolation valve for the gas that feeds the uh, tankless water heater. You have the cold water supply line. And coming into the tankless water, you have the on and off valve. And then you also have a flush valve here on the side. And then as it goes through the tankless water heater, it gets hot. And it should come out of the tankless water heater and then go into the house. So there's another isolation valve here. And then there's also a flush line. So this is typically on. So it is a cap for the flush valve or the flush line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the gas, right? And then we're going to close the cold water feed. And we're also going to close the hot water feed. And then we're going to connect a flushing hose to the system. So let's take a look on what materials you're going to need to do that prop process okay this is what i got for uh, this descaling flushing operation i went online and bought a couple of these um, three quarter inch adapt hoses there's a hot one it's got a little red marking and then a blue one and then i actually have a little sump recirculation pump i use this actually for my water slide so that i can recirculate the water for the water slide and then that way i can conserve water while the kids keep playing um you need a bucket and then you need about two gallons of distilled vinegar. What I don't have shown here is um, you do need a garden hose because after you flush with distilled vinegar for two hours to loosen up the scale, um, you do want to run fresh water, basically use the inlet water and then on the outlet connect it to a garden hose and then send it to um, a garden or somewhere. Not a garden because the vinegar will kill your plants. but um, at least initially you want to flush it out somewhere that is safe um, so I don't have the garden hose shown in this picture but you do need a garden hose and you will need a power supply because you have a sump pump that needs power um, and that's about it now um, this hose is about uh, 20 bucks right you can actually buy a kit on Amazon is tankless water heater flushing kit I'll give you a bucket and um, the pump and the hoses is about a hundred bucks, hundred and fifteen dollars. Um, if you don't already have a lot of stuff, I have the pump, which is probably the most expensive component. Um, so I just went ahead and ordered the hose, and then uh, and that's all you really need. Let's take a closer look at the setup. So I have the cold water inlet bypass, right, right here, right, and that's connected to the pump. So it's going to pump the vinegar from this bucket up this hose through this bypass. I'll have this closed and that will be open and it will go into the heating heat transfer element and it'll come out. It'll have, I'll have this valve closed so it won't go back into the house and this will be open and then it will just send it back into the bucket. Now keep in mind though, um, these hoses came with a little o-ring. Make sure you use it or else you can get water everywhere. Right? So we're going to go ahead and 
close these valves and open these valves. Now I did go ahead and shut off the gas, but at the same time I went ahead and turned off the power just in case because I don't want it to kick on. Um, it should still allow me to flow the water without the power on. So let's go ahead and close the valves. Well, close the inlet and open the bypass valve. Okay, so I have the system started. It's flushing through there. And you see the I have it tied together so that it doesn't uh, slip out. This thing's been flushing for about an hour or two hours actually. You can kind of see the nastiness of it. Now the water level is rising so it means that one of these valves isn't um, closed all the way but that's okay. Um, it still looks like it did a pretty decent job of doing some flushing. So now I'm going to turn off the pump and I'm going to keep this the same on this side and we'll flush out of this line but I'm going to close the recirculating inlet right and I'll open the um, and I'll open the cold water feed. So then it should then come from the cold water feed go in there and flush everything out of the hot water line right before I open this I don't want to send all that vinegar and all that debris into the house and then have to go and take off all the aerators um, and clean that all out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and let it flush for about 20-30 minutes and uh, hopefully that will be it and that will let me have more balance or I guess more plentiful hot water on demand. Um, so with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like and share button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That would really help me out. As always, Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next random video.